welcome back to Toy Figure Focus Online. Second edition and a very special one already. We've got a guest. The guest standing here next to me is Malcolm Watson from Britain's and he's brought along a very special piece which we're going to look at in some detail. Malcolm's going to explain what it's all about and then I'll take us through some of the, the finer points of it. So, welcome Malcolm. Hi Mike, nice to be here. What can I tell you about this wonderful figure? Um, it's item number 2009 and the inspiration for it of course was the Desperate Escape from Isandwana. It's a six horse, four gun limber and crew including, as you can see there, the uh, Zulu warrior trying to take one of the, um, the officers down and a desperate, desperate bandsman trying to jump onto the piece. The gun at the back is a, a proper seven pound, um, as would have been there at the time. And this figure will be available in store, touching wood, so that no, no hold-ups come in uh, around about September of this year. Right. And what actually is this? Is this a production piece? This is a pre-production piece. Right. It's the only one in existence. Wow. So we're fortunate enough to have this over on loan from the United States. It's been a feature at the London Toy Soldier Show yes. back in June. Yes. And uh, we've carefully brought it up here to you today. And um, quite priceless, I'd imagine. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm being very cautious. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, I put my glasses on now so I can actually look at the detail. I'm going to start at this end. The gun detaches. And as Malcolm said, in itself, this is a super little piece. It's got the seats on the sides, the footrests, uh, well, all the details that are there on the on the original piece. At the back here, we've got the limber. This guy, obviously, looking uh, nervously back um, at, the, at the Zulus uh, following him. But at least he's safe for the moment. Unlike this chap, this poor fellow has actually got a passenger. Uh, an unwelcome one at that, because a Zulu has jumped up and grabbed him. Uh, Malcolm described it as a as a perfect rugby tackle, um, and he's trying to. He's drawn his his revolver and he's trying to shoot him. Um, unlikely that he will uh, succeed. This driver is is urging the team on, and then here at the front we've got another dramatic little scene. One of the things that really makes this piece what it the, the fantastic thing that it is here. A bandsman is desperately, desperately trying to climb aboard to escape, getting no help from the driver, in fact, I have to say at this moment, who's much more busily uh, whipping on the horses. So, welcome. tell us a little bit more about the background to, to arriving at a fantastic piece like this. Well, you start uh, by research. Research is the key. Mm -hmm. We're very fortunate to have the renowned author, Ian Knight, mm -hmm. uh, as, as an advisor. And Ian, Ian's knowledge of the Zulu campaign, as you and most people know, is, is vast, and, and we, we drew on that knowledge. From uh, discussions with Ian, we then look at photographs, mm. which are very difficult to come by. Yes. On the actual Zulu battlefield, of course, everything was line drawings. Yes. So you're then going back to the line drawings of the, of the battle scenes. Yeah. And then reading accounts of the desperate escape, and when you consider nobody survived, mm. or those few that, that, that saw it, mm. you know, mm. did they want to write about it, and how accurate was it? Mm. So after doing that, we then have to talk to the sculptors. Mm. Now this piece is all hand sculpted, mm. so you can imagine each one mm. <laughs> having to be put together. Mm. And there's a number of pre-production pieces that will be made before we go into the final pre-production. Right. So the, the time scale is it's more than a year. Yeah. From conception to the model being out there, you're probably looking two, two and a half years. Yeah. That's how far ahead we have to be. Wow. And as I said, each of these figures are hand sculpted and they're then hand painted. Mm. So when you consider the detail that is in somebody like the bandsman, the detail of the chains, the, the whip, mm. the reins, mm. before you even go onto the gun piece, mm. It, it's an amazing feat and very, very good value for money. For example, an individual figure takes around about five to seven hours to paint by yeah. hand. Multiply that across the, the piece. You can see why I love it so much. Yeah. We've set up some more of the range now alongside the uh, Splendid Limber itself. Some of those are pieces that I've mentioned in the previous issue of Collector's Gazette and others are some more new ones. 
Uh, let's take a look at those in more detail as we sort of swing along the scene. You've got a, an infantryman over here uh, trying to keep a, a Zulu back, an artilleryman firing at one of the Zulus pursuing him, and then the uh, hand of Nemesis here, um, another artilleryman being hauled back. And then this splendid piece at the back, the mounted officer, which is one of my particular favourites, with a wounded Zulu, probably still dangerous at his feet. So, Malcolm, when is this splendid piece going to be in the shops? We're hoping it will be uh, in all the retailers at yeah. uh, some stage during September. Right. Uh, it's certainly on plan to be so. Yeah. And uh, it's got a retail point of only four nine nine, wow. which for the yeah. detail that's in yeah, there that's... Is, is, is pretty good value for money. Absolutely. That's a must-have. Well, it's really on my is. Christmas list. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay, thanks very much, Malcolm. Thanks for coming in, oh, okay. giving That's us a chance to have a nice view with you again. Preview, um, a nice way to show this off. Okay, right. That's it from Toy Figure Focus online for this time. Um, if you want to be a guest, get in touch.